So there was a scientist named Ernest Rutherford, and Rutherford uh, did some experiments, which we don't need to go into here, and he proposed a model of the atom. And for the most part, he was right. We have a nucleus, which is positively charged in the center. There's also neutrons in there, which we know about now. Then there's electrons in a cloud surrounding the nucleus. Now, Rutherford, uh, he thought that the electrons sort of orbited the nucleus, kind of like the planets orbit around the sun. If you have a particle or some object around which other particles are orbiting, so in other words, these electrons are orbiting around the nucleus, if this nucleus, if this central particle is static and these particles are moving around it, there's a tendency in physics for as these particles move around the nucleus in their orbit, they're actually going to spiral into the nucleus and eventually collapse into it. Okay? Um, any particle that's in an orbit around another particle, as long as the central particle is static, the outer particle that's orbiting will orbit and it'll get closer and closer to the nucleus or whatever the central particle is, and it'll eventually spiral into it and collapse into it. And understand, that's without charge. That's if these both were neutral. It would eventually collapse in if it was orbiting in a circular or elliptical orbit. However, the other factor is both of these particles are oppositely charged, so they're also attracted to each other. So Rutherford's model doesn't actually make physical sense, so to speak, because these electrons should, by both virtue of orbit and their columbic attraction, they should spiral into the nucleus, right? But they don't. We know they don't. So there has to be some, something that's preventing them from collapsing into the nucleus. Now, one thing we can say is as an orbiting electron spiraled into the nucleus, its radius of orbit would decrease, which I think makes sense because if it's getting closer and closer to the nucleus, its radius of orbit is decreasing. I don't think we need to linger there. I think it's a pretty simple concept. But if we look at the formula for angular momentum L, it's equal to the moment of inertia of the particle times its angular frequency or angular velocity, excuse me. And this is equal to mR squared omega. So we notice that angular, angular momentum is a function of the radius. So if we're changing the radius, and presumably we're changing the radius, it's dropping, 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 and that would appear that the radius could take on a continuum of values. Therefore, the angular momentum should also change, and it should also be able to take on a continuum of values. So there came a guy named Niels Bohr, a very famous scientist, and Bohr said the only way that the electrons don't come into the nucleus is if their angular momentum is quantized. Now, in really simplistic terms, and it kind of, in some ways, can break down a little bit when you get really complicated, but the basic understanding is if the angular momentum can only take on certain values, so to speak, then the radius can only take on certain values. And if the radius can only take on discrete values, then there's no way for the electron to spiral into the nucleus and collapse. Because the electron, basically, if its angular momentum is quantized and the angular momentum can only take on discrete values, then the electron can only take on discrete radii from the nucleus, so to speak, and it can only be in certain places. Okay? The electron can't be anywhere. It has to be quantized and confined. And one of the key things that you need to remember, particularly when we start discussing a free particle versus particle in a box, is that confinement of any particle, assuming it's a quantum particle, causes quantization. So if you have a small particle and you confine it, that causes the particle to start displaying quantum behavior. And basically the takeaway message is that what Bohr was saying is that if you quantize the angular momentum, then the particle, the electron that is, can only be in certain positions around the nucleus, and that would prevent it from spiraling into the nucleus, which it would tend to do if it was orbiting based on orbital mechanics and then also columbic attraction to the nucleus. All right, And this is another example in addition to in addition to Max Planck coming up with quantization of energy levels, and also Albert Einstein independently arriving at Planck's constant. Rather, or excuse me, Bohr is the next person basically to propose quantization. All right, 
And in the next experiment, which is the line emission spectrum of hydrogen, which we'll discuss in the next video, we actually get a real clear picture that energy is in fact quantized. And really this along with that, which we'll discuss later, helped to develop quantum mechanics at the very turn of the 20th century. All right, so hopefully this made a little bit of sense. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.